yeah that that was um living there was a big realization that um what we take for granted is not for most people like it's very very complex stuff i think for them it's still uh, a big win uh not having to to rely on on a currency that is printed outside their country like in the us Today we're back in studio with Quentin and Sam, who are really living every Bitcoiner's dream. I mean, you guys are living on a tropical island in El Salvador, teaching people how to use Bitcoin. And I know for most people that, uh, you know, what, what could be better? Uh, having myself lived here for 20 years and knowing the reality of things on the ground, uh, I'm sure it's uh, a lot more involved than that. Um, but we'll we'll dive into that. But I am very excited to have you guys, and I, I really admire what you guys are doing because I know how challenging it is to try to take an isolated place that really doesn't have consistent services, that has very little understanding of how the financial system works, even in dollar terms, and then to go live there and try to start a Bitcoin circular economy. It's uh, not something that, that happens uh, overnight by any means. <laughs> Um, but before we dive into that, would love to hear just your guys' story. I think you met, uh, was it in Mexico? Yeah. Or, yeah. So, so tell, tell the guests how you guys came to be, Quentin and Sam, and how Bitcoin entered into that equation and brought you guys to El Salvador. Cool. Well, thank you, Mike, for inviting us first. Um, do you want to start with sure. your Bitcoin story? With my Bitcoin story? Honestly, my Bitcoin story is basically Quentin. He, <laughs> <laughs> he introduced every single thing that I know about Bitcoin. Of course, now it has grown into like my own kind of thing because I live in a Bitcoin mm -hmm. island, which is the, the whole um, mm -hmm. project, let's say. But um, yeah, no, my Bitcoin sto story literally started with Quentin. We met in Mexico in, was it March, maybe? Mm-hmm. Uh, April 2022. 2022. Oh, yes. wow. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah, it's been recent. a while. <laughs> that's, know, that's, that's not that long. I mean, that's, <laughs> no, uh, that's I, I thought you guys had been together for, you know, years. So. No, we, we met during my travel and then our travel. Like exactly. we, we continued traveling together. Exactly. And I, I've been telling her that she's more of a Bitcoiner than many Bitcoiners because <laughs> she actually lives of bitcoin i like, actually use it right uh, i actually like pay every my day bills. she pays with bitcoin so i think she's more of a bitcoiner than many many people <laughs> well, claim my, to my, be my wife will always tell but no i'm not really a bitcoin i'm like you use bitcoin more <laughs> exactly. you're, on a daily basis you're transacting exactly She's like yeah but i'm not like listening to all the podcasts i'm stuff i'm like but you actually know how to use it exactly there's lots of bitcoiners mm -hmm. that know all the theory but to actually make a lightning transaction yeah know how to do it so, exactly so you're a bitcoiner for sure <laughs> exactly well they they tell me that they tell me that for sure and i do think so but it's just like i don't have the whole twitter game mindset let's say <laughs> yeah. but um, i'm growing into that's that. a subset of, of, of yeah. Bitcoin. it might be healthier you know yeah <laughs> so it's better i try to 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 get out of it yeah but, uh, stuff just deleted the the twitter app so <laughs> yeah. we'll see how it goes <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those things that it, it's where everybody congregates. And so to keep people updated and keep people excited, you kind of have yeah. to be there. But but sometimes it can kind of drain the life out of you. And so um, and you are originally from Mexico. Did you like meet in your hometown or? No, you... actually, yes, I am from Mexico. I was raised and born there, but I was doing this like voluntary work at a hostel in Baja California in La Paz. And I was working there in the reception and then here the Frenchie comes, right? So <laughs> we kind of met there. He was traveling throughout Mexico. He left everything in France mm -hmm. and came to Mexico or went to Mexico to travel for six months, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we met there and then we started traveling together ever so, since. So was yeah. it love at first sight or was he like pursuing you for a while before you Well, you know, in? we have different stories. <laughs> for <laughs> that. For yeah. me, I, I honestly didn't even realize he was into me. And then he says like it was he was so obvious. So, yeah. Yeah. It took a few days, weeks to start realizing that. Uh, kind of days. <laughs> yeah. We, we could work something out. Okay. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was it was cool my my bitcoin story is a bit longer <laughs> um but it's i i discovered bitcoin in 2016 i was trying to buy weed on the deep web and so i tried to do it in a very like uh, private way uh discreet and so i, I bought a like a, a some kind of gift card that you buy like uh in the street and that you can reuse uh, online. And I tried to swap this uh, gift card for Bitcoin to then buy weed. And of course I never uh, achieved- uh, He got scammed. Yeah, I got scammed. <laughs> I don't know what I did exactly. I was, I was using Electrum and it was, wow. Like I, I knew nothing about it and it was so hard. I just lost it. Like, I don't know if I even received the Bitcoin. So anyway, and what, what year was this? 2016. 2016. Yeah, summer of 2016, and then I discovered uh, Bitcoin again. Like, like I actually forgot that I was using uh, Bitcoin in a way. And uh, 2017, I discovered Bitcoin again. I started learning about it, but I mostly started. Uh, investing in shit coins <laughs> and learning about ethereum decentralize everything and like uh, then uh, came 20, 2018 and i had time to uh realize that it was only bitcoin and from them uh, from there i i started to really study uh what is money what is inflation why why do we need bitcoin etc and just yeah, I I started accumula accumulating Bitcoin and uh, and that's it. And then you were traveling after COVID. Yeah, um, so I left France in February of 2022. Uh, I actually left home in October of 2021. I left my apartment. I bought a car. Started tra traveling around France. And came February and I said, okay, I have to, to do it, like really do it. So I sold the car and I just bought a flight ticket to Mexico. And then I started traveling for six months at first. And then I just stayed and we, we continued traveling you guys, together. You guys met in La Paz. Yeah. And yeah. then did you leave your, your volunteer position after you guys... <laughs> Matter? or how did that work? It was something like that. So okay. he had been traveling for a month or something like that, maybe a month and a half yeah. when we met. And I was just doing the voluntary thing for three weeks. Uh, it was a quick little thing that I just felt like doing. And so when my work was over, I went back to my hometown, which is Guadalajara. He came to visit. Uh, we stayed in contact like through through these like week or weeks or months, maybe. Um, he he said he was only going to stay for like a couple of nights, two or three nights in Guadalajara because he's always avoiding big cities. Well, he stayed for like two weeks in there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, we were just hanging out in Guadalajara. It was, it was very nice. And then after that, he kept on with his travel. And I stayed for a little bit longer. I, I don't know how long it was until we met again in Puebla, actually. So we started com com coming down uh, from the south of Mexico, just doing like the coast, going all the way to like the mountain area in San Cristobal. And it was just beautiful. It was I love San beautiful. Cristobal. It's yeah, it's, it's a it's nice a, place. Yeah, I love it. It's a special it. place. It is. It is. The city doesn't like me, but I kind of <laughs> like it. Like I, I fell sick, um, I, I don't know, maybe three, four times in, in, in like three months. Yeah. Like it was awful. I don't know if it was the water or anything, but I, I got sick many times. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, 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 at first we were traveling a little bit together and then she went back uh, to her town and, and then we just, 
crossed uh, the border to Guatemala, uh, spent a month, um, a month there. Uh, we visited uh, Lago Bitcoin in Lago Atitlán. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it was it was cool. And and then so we, had you you had heard about like Lago Bitcoin and and Bitcoin yeah. Beach and that kind of stuff at that yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, so when I was still in France, I was I was looking for a country to go visit, and I I was hesitating to go visit El Salvador uh, directly, um, and I actually chose Mexico because it was a bigger country, and so I wanted to travel for six months. I said, okay, go to Mexico. And then when I decided to to stay and I just didn't take my flight back, um, we crossed the border to Guatemala and then El Salvador. That was my first introduction to Bitcoin, kind of, because of course, when ever since we met, he he always mentioned Bitcoin and all these things. But honestly, for me, it was just a word, like nothing but a word. Yeah, I've heard it before years ago and then never heard it again. Um, so... In Guatemala, after maybe two or three weeks of traveling around Guatemala, he he said, he mentioned, like, let's go to La Guatitlan, which also it's a pretty touristic place. So if we were yeah. there, like, we should go, right? And um, and so I remember that he gets in contact with this guy through Twitter or through, of course, through Twitter, right? Yes. And um, he tells me, like, Sam, like, today we're meeting this guy. And I'm like, okay, who's this? And he's like, I don't know, like someone, like he explains this whole thing that today I understand what it was. But at that time I was like, so we're <laughs> meeting like a stranger only for like money or <laughs> I didn't really get it. Right. And so mm-hmm. he showed us the place where I don't even remember what we were doing there. Like it was a it was a school or of some um, sort. Yeah. 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 In it was a school that they uh, used that as headquarters. Yeah. Maybe it's or kind of the base like of. Yeah. Of- like Bitcoin, mm-hmm. love right. Bitcoin, and we visited the 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 exact place where they mine Bitcoin with the uh, um, seed right. oil. Okay, mm-hmm. that was interesting. That was so interesting to me. That mm-hmm. was very nice. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, but that was like my first kind of realization of okay, this is a worldwide thing. Like, but did you think it was really weird that he was meeting with somebody he had just talked to on Twitter? Like, exactly. That was- like for me, we were traveling in this new country he just comes up with hey let's go to this specific town because he's waiting for us and i'm like who and he's like uh <laughs> <I'm> like what <laughs> and that's what i love about uh, bitcoin communities and that's what i um that's what i uh first discovered um in guatemala and then el salvador is, is that um before that i was only a bitcoiner in in books uh, in my own purse, let's say, like accumulating Bitcoin or stacking sats or whatever. But I, I had never experienced um, hanging out with, with Bitcoiners and, and spending Bitcoin and, and, you know, just participating in this circular economy. And so, yeah, in Lago Atitlan, it was the, the first time that uh, I, I actually purchased something in Bitcoin, like physically, I think. So yeah, no, it was it was great, and then we did it again and again and again in El Salvador. But you can imagine, like for me, it was this super weird experience. I remember it just came to me just now. We were waiting for him in this like taco place in Guatemala, and <laughs> this person just uh, shows up at the place, and he's like, "Hi, are you Quentin? Yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go." And we just started walking like on the street with him, and he, you can see his. He was so eager to show us around and he was just very happy that we were there. And I was like, who is this? Per-? Like, I, I didn't even know what I was doing there. Right. And so but you can see, I don't know if this was just, um, you know, the fact that he was very excited for somebody going there for Bitcoin specifically or it was just his personality. Like, I think it was a merch of both. Yeah. But um, but it was just so nice to see him just so eager to to show us around to. Mm-hmm. I remember there was this wall where everybody who goes visit, they just like, uh, yeah, write yeah. their like exactly. Twitter, like a, like a signature with the with the the date. And his name is Eliasar, and ah, he's a yes, great yes, guy. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he spent some time here with us. Yeah, yeah. wow, cool. amazing. Cool. So cool. Yeah, he came down for like a week and and spent time with the whole 
the Bitcoin right. Beach Crew. Okay. Um, but my uh, my wife had that kind of same experience <laughs> with the Twitter. She was like, it was the f- right when we were starting and people started to notice. And one of the the first Bitcoiners that came down was Miles Suter, uh, who works with Cash App. And we had just connected on, on Twitter. And so I told her, I'm like, hey, we have this guy coming to stay with us you know, for, for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and she's like, well, how do you know him? I'm like, oh, I've never met him. I just connected with him on Twitter. And, and she's <laughs> like, wait, what? Exactly. Yeah. This guy's going to come like stay in our house with us? He could be some type of serial killer. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's a, a Bitcoiner. Bitcoiner. <laughs> he's a Bitcoiner. <laughs> yeah. She's like, Ugh. But now Miles is one of her favorites. So, of course. Uh, so it worked out. But uh yeah, that's uh, for people who aren't in the Bitcoin space. It seems very weird, and it's it's a uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of a great bond. Like Bitcoin is 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 uh, is amazing. Like for this, like you have uh, this kind of technology network, um, whatever you call it, like money. It just bonds people, and that's exactly why. It, exists like that's its purpose yeah so did it make a difference for you to like spend bitcoin for the first time was that eye-opening of wow this is this is much deeper than i thought and this can do much more it was i i so i'm i'm a bitcoiner i've been a bitcoiner for years and i i was completely um um have to put it like okay with it like i knew um bitcoin was the answer let's say um but effectively like um paying in bitcoin was a, a realization that yes like a, a confirmation let's say um and and then when we arrived in el salvador and we started paying in bitcoin that was amazing like that was a great feeling like a, a great feeling of confirmation of acknowledging that uh that yeah it's the future but it's it's better than the f- than the future it's it's the present it's now it's so here. let's let's do whatever we can to to help not even just paying sorry not even just paying but seeing the signs like bitcoin just all over the walls all over in Guatemala, like in the, you remember that big uh-huh. mural? It was just a Bitcoin mural. And I was just like, wow, it was, it was impressing. Did it make it more real for you to see that people were like transacting in Bitcoin? And it was, of course, yeah. it was this eye opening experience for me, like something that I've never, or that I didn't know what it was before. Um, it just became a whole lifestyle now. Like it's insane how much it has changed over the past months i'm gonna say it's crazy and so was that the reason you guys decided to come to el salvador was or part of it or you know i know a lot of times there's mixed motives for going to a place but um i'm assuming that was part of the reason you wanted to come to el salvador was to experience that yeah absolutely like um again when i was still in france um i was seeing the news about uh um bitcoin beach first and then um Bitcoin being legal tender in El Salvador. And I had mixed feelings about it. I had my own opinion, um, which was more or less like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, it was kind of a top-down decision in a way um, for a grassroots money, like a decentralized money. And I was like, that's, that's maybe not the, the best way to, like Bitcoin doesn't need to be a legal tender. Uh, so I was kind of eh, okay, and and then we arrived to El Salvador, and and then we 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 had the first hand experience of of what it was actually like, and and what it was all about, and it was completely different, and I think uh, it changed my mind, but I think what really changed my mind is uh, not only seeing the country, but seeing. Uh, the, the team of Mi Primer Bitcoin, uh, discovering their work uh, and discovering what they do, their mission, and and realizing that this is what I'm looking for, that this is the grassroots movement that promotes um, 
um, impartial education to individuals. Um, so yeah, uh, at that moment, which was not long after arriving really, because the first thing that I tried to, to find was a Bitcoin meetup. And so we found one that was actually organized by Me Premier Bitcoin. And, and I just said, okay, that's, that's what I want to, to look for. And that's what I want to, to help in a way, promote. And that was in San Salvador in the capital. Yeah. Yeah. That was in August okay. uh, of uh, 2022. Okay. And then the, the first time, well, before I get to that, what I'm, I'm curious, you said it kind of changed your mind about them making it legal tender. What, can you flesh that a, out a little bit? What do you mean by that? Like, yeah, so you think it was a good thing or you think it was a bad thing? <laughs> no, I think, I think it's a good thing because, um, so it's not pushed on people. Like you don't see people having to accept Bitcoin, even though I don't, I don't know really how it's written in the law. Uh, that doesn't matter. What matters is the reality. And the reality is that um, this Bitcoin as legal tender law is about facilitating the use of Bitcoin, not manda mandating it. So that's a net positive for me. And, and I see people using Bitcoin, accepting Bitcoin, others uh, do not. And that's fine. Like you don't see people being fined or, you know, facing... Uh, uh, justice for yeah. for not using Bitcoin. So that's we have all the positive without the negative. So it's and it's I think okay. that's important for people around the world to understand that yeah. because you know you just read some reports. It's like no, they're forcing everybody to use it. And no, it's, absolutely uh, not. Yeah, it's definitely not that. So I think the first time I heard anything about you guys was you were in Punta Mango, and yeah. Juan, our caretaker of the property we have down there, is like. Hey, there's some couple here that that wants to teach English or do something, uh -huh. and 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 I was busy with other things, and I, I'm sure I did a horrible job following up with you guys. <laughs> but then we wound up uh, out on the island, and that was when yeah. I first met you guys. Yeah, and so exactly. John from Me Premier Bitcoin had, you know, come to me and said, "Hey, let's. What if we tried to do something together? There's this island where we've done a couple educational things." It would be great if we kind of like did some more educational things together. And then I was like, well, let's take it a step further. Let's let's see if we can actually make that into a true circular economy. I mean, it's it's on an island. They're isolated. They don't have any banks or ATM on the island. I mean, it's it's going to be challenging, but it, it could really. It has the um, potential for it. Yeah, it could mm -hmm. and really change the people's lives. And so um, and then he mentioned you guys and i i don't know if i even made the connection then until we were i think it was when when we went to the island for that one training and i mm -hmm. i was like oh, okay yes, yeah they were in punta mongo before so so how did you wind up in punta mongo and then how did you get from there to uh la paria so so first um i uh, i was alone i went to a um, uh, bitcoin diploma in september in apopa with the team of Mi Premier Bitcoin. And back then I, I put myself in contact with them to try to help them in, in some way, like a volunteer uh, work. And, and so I did one Bitcoin diploma in Apopa and then we continued traveling, uh, went back to Mexico, went back to El Salvador. And in December, uh, we went to La Pirraya for the Bitcoin diploma uh, of the island. That's where we met. And um, but you had already been in Punta Mango before that. Yes, yes, that's right. Um, in in Punta Mango, how did we were basically this... just um, traveling around El Salvador for the second time. Let's say let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of looking for a place to kind of stay long term, not only two or three days, uh, and then keep on going to the next city. So first, I remember this is a funny story story because we were in Conchagua in a place a little town in the mountain mm -hmm. and we were staying at this at the only hostel that there's in Conchagua and so this French couple with mm -hmm. with babies <laughs> appear there and we just thought they were like just tourists like just French people coming to visit El Salvador and we started having a conversation with them and they said they actually recommended us to go to Punta Mango they lived there 
for the past. Is that Miguel? Miguel and, and yeah. Yeah. Amandine, yeah. I think. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he told us he put us in contact with uh, Juan, Juan exactly. Directly. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. I called him. I called Juan, and we just set up the the date for us to go to see Punta Mango to see what the project was the house and everything and it was great we stayed at his house actually for a couple of days yeah. <clears throat> um we, we just kind of like yeah we looked around and we basically decided we were not staying because there was no wi-fi that was a whole thing because i i am a i teach online um and so i need to keep on teaching and so with no wi-fi it was very complicated and then there was there were other things and stuff so basically we just kind of declined the that project or that opportunity and kept on going looking for another place um and that's somehow we just uh ended up in la piraya for the bit me premier bitcoin okay. diploma mm -hmm. thing yeah that was before um why am i blanking on it now the the satellite internet uh starting starlink. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. was before starlink was operational and that which has really been a game changer now because yeah. now we have Starlink out in Punta Mango, there's Starlink in La Paria, and so. Which is amazing. Yeah. Like it works great. I, I, at least in La Piraya, it, it works perfect. I, I mean, I think it works better than most other options here. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was one of like the first, in the US we live in kind of a rural area and we use satellite internet out there that was crazy expensive and it was horrible. I mean, the latency on it was, and so when they were talking about Starlink, I was like, eh, satellite yeah. doesn't, but no, I've been super impressed. It's, and it it's works. so nice to not have to like worry. You're like, you could go anywhere, build a house anywhere, and you know, you have internet. Yeah. And it aligns itself and you don't have to do any kind of setup. It just works. So yeah, it's nice. Very nice. So, and then you guys, I think you left again and then mm -hmm. John yeah after john and i talked he reached out to you guys about this crazy idea that we had yeah basically we've been back and forth uh el salvador mexico because i mean i'm i'm from there all my family is there and so even though they're super excited that i'm here traveling i do want to go visit them very often <laughs> i'm mexican so that's yeah. what we do yes. right yes. family matters yes. family matters <laughs> no but um so yeah we've been kind of going back and forth um especially me but then quentin joins me uh from time mm -hmm. to time and so we were there uh we spent christmas there and the the holidays and stuff it was very nice and then we just stayed for couple of months we we were in san cristobal by the way we okay. lived yeah. there for three months that's when he got very sick <laughs> um but so we were there we were kind of just i don't know if i want to say waiting but we were just kind of uh seeing around seeing mexico again uh looking for a place to stay a little long term um and we were in san cristobal because i love the city i really want to try living there and so that's when after three months john just called him and he was like do you want to take care of an island? <laughs> yeah, so I, I was actually working on my um, on the online business that I'm working on, uh, which is the Bitcoin backup. I try to I'm building this this business where I want to um, uh, help non technical people to achieve the same sovereignty as uh, us Bitcoin nerds, let's say. <laughs> and uh, out of the blue, he called me. It was in March, maybe. And he told me like, uh, you remember, you remember La Piraya? Okay, do you want to live there? <laughs> and I said, it was um, I said something like no. <laughs> <laughs> and and then, but I but I told him I would uh, sleep on it and and think about it. And we got we got to throw some of those pictures up here, Andy, of right. the island. Yeah. So. And so he, I, I called him again, like uh, a few days uh, later, uh, and and uh, show, show the just the the sunset one. So you know, uh, it's like how could you say no to, to this? <laughs> <thing>? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's a beautiful island. Like it's beautiful. Um, but yeah, I I had already been there. I know it's remote. I know it's kind of poor. Uh, it's it's isolated. Uh, it's a small island, and, so, you, and you've traveled enough to know that uh, something yeah. that's beautiful for the day exactly. is uh, not necessarily exactly. a place you want to live mm -hmm. for months. That's exactly yeah. it. it. Especially and, when the offer was so bold, like John literally said, 
do you want to go and live in an island like just create a bitcoin circular economy mm -hmm. there <laughs> and and actually that's what i loved about it like i said okay um if if your only reason not to go is is, is fear it's not a good enough reason so i called him back and i said okay let's do it let's go and uh one month later i was in in Lapkeraya. it was in may like three months ago well i want to know what you said well, you know, at first, um, we were both a little tired of San Cristobal. It's, it has been three months already. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of sickness, honestly. And I love the city, but it was just, maybe it was okay to have a little change. But then Ready for I some said, warmer climate? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Course. But then I, he, he always said, like, Sam, this is like kind of a thing that I'm going to do. But then, of course, you can stay, like, you can do something else, whatever. And it was just like my decision. But then... Also, John said something about teaching English in La Pirraya. And so for me, I always knew this was like a just a way to put it like kind of sweet me out of the come join us kind of thing. But honestly, for me, it was a very nice thought of me doing what I love, which is teaching like teaching English and just doing it on this completely different space, right? Like in an island. Again, the dream, right? Tropical, nice. You got the ocean and everything. And so I said, sure, like, let's try it. It was a six month project. And so I said, it's going to be fine. It's going to be great. So I kind of joined in. So what is, uh, you know, it, it, these are the pictures that people see. I feel like it's like that meme, like the <laughs> that what you expect and <laughs> what, what, what it is. So right. um, obviously you you guys find it beautiful and it has natural beauty. But what, what has it been like living on a remote island without consistent services that gets very warm and, and is uh, it's one thing to visit for the day, but it's another thing to be there long term? So it wasn't easy, uh, to say the least, but <laughs> um, the community was very, very welcoming and that helped us a lot. At first, I think the first month, uh, we did not um, acknowledge it that much. Like we, we did not see, um, like they were welcoming, but kind of uh, taking a step back, like, let's see what you're doing. Um, we're not the first NGO to come to this island. They have heard a lot of promises from NGOs and, and the government as well uh, that were left unaccomplished. So they're like, well, let's see what they're doing. And little by little, um, we just kind of made friends uh, with with some and just, I don't know, like it, it was... Uh, I think after three months, um, I can say that um, we're good there. Like we're, yeah. we're we're having a good time. It's it's very hard because uh, there is no trash management. Like people burn the trash or uh, leave it in 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 dumpsters or uh, even throw it in the sea, um, which is kind of crazy. But it's it's what happens it's there. It's reality. Like. Yeah. They could feel, uh, they could feel uh, trash bags, but they can't do anything with it. Like they can't um, make them leave the island. So, like, there's the only option really is to burn the trash. Um, there is an issue with the the, the rainwater that that forms uh, puddles in the streets um, that that are filled with uh, trash and. Uh, um, pieces from dogs, cows, uh, horses. Um, there is no um, public lighting. Uh, there is also an issue with the, with the tide. When it rises, it, it comes into the island. So it, so it actually blends with uh, the feces, the trash, the, the puddles. And we've been told that uh, people actually in, in September, October, they have to, to, to Cross some parts of the island with the same boats that they use to go to the port. So it's it's kind of a, um, a complicated situation, and you have to live there to really realize that wow, that's the state of things. And everybody there agrees that something has to change, but nobody does anything about it. So 
that was the, the, the hardest part to, to garner, come on, um, let's say, uh, uh, traction and, um, uh, um, fight the inertia and, 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 and build momentum. Yeah. That was the hardest part. Exactly. Cause I mean, honestly, for the first three weeks, we were just completely covered by paint because we were, uh, kind of remodeling. Yeah. Renovating, we have, renovating let's, let's, the, uh, so there was a, an existing community center there that had basically was just full of junk and was dilapidated. Right. Yeah. And you, when you guys showed up, I think we have a video that shows like a before and after. Yeah. Um, we spent hours of our life there. <laughs> and so that's well, what it I was... looks just amazing the way it <laughs> yeah, came yeah. out. Do um, we have that video? Okay. Great. But, but, uh, it, I was telling you guys, I, I think I could have done the, the Me Premier Bitcoin and the Bitcoin Beach signs there. <laughs> uh, my, my artistic ability. There you ability. go. That's so that, yeah, that was, and that was not how it was when you got there. That was, yeah. that was already that was cleaned, cleaned up. up. Yeah, yeah. That's the cleaned up version right there versus, uh, yeah, just such an amazing transformation. And, and really, if you guys wouldn't have gone there there's a good chance that 10 years from now that thing would have just been dilapidated and under probably use, so it, it's so it had great been to used, see it it had been used as a nursery uh maybe for a few months five I've years heard. ago yeah okay. and and it had been left like this so so what we actually see in the video is the 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 house the communal house but cleaned up like it, yeah. it, it was filled like so there, there are no windows, and um, when it when, when there are storms in La Piraya, uh, it actually rains horizontally. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And so um, it was filled with uh, sand and like everything, Wet like paper every, and whatever trash you can and think and of. Yeah. It was exactly. there. Exactly. Like it was just filth. It was crazy. And so those those yeah pictures. Let's say they're already cleaned up. Like the the team uh quentin got some people to just work with him to clean it up and then um we painted it i don't you know did you get any shorts. paint on the wall or is it all on your shorts <laughs> <laughs> uh that was the day we finished paint painting we, we were so proud we were so, yeah, so proud. and for people who haven't painted in a hot humid place it is it is taxing. It, yeah. Uh, it takes it out of you. You can the, see Quentin working there. Yeah. The <laughs> higher up you're uh, painting the wall, the, the yeah, hotter the it warmer gets. It is. Oh, uh, my God. Exactly. And so, yeah, it, it, we spent maybe two weeks um, cleaning and painting. And in the end, in, it turned out uh, beautiful because um, we could actually, like, we did some kind of... Um, opening ceremony or yeah. kind of a little party um invited everyone on the island telling them like this is your communal house um and and then we started uh giving classes uh, yeah. english classes with uh sam um spanish classes uh with uh, so, so explain that to people because some people would think like well why are you giving spanish classes uh -huh. Uh -huh. in a spanish-speaking country okay so yeah of course um like few people um, went to school from the adults, like uh, kids go to school today, but when they, like the island got populated uh, some 40 years ago, like people were fleeing the war and they got there and just mm, probably started living in a survival mode and they just didn't go to school. Um, so there was a, a local teacher, um, on the island. So we said, okay, please work with us and, and give, uh, Spanish classes to, to help people learn how to read and work and write. And we also organized, uh, workshops. Um, we did, uh, acrylic nail. Yeah. We did acrylic nails, uh, for women to, women to learn, uh, how to paint nails and maybe sell this service to tourists and locals. Um, we did, um, homemade soap as well. 
um and then bitcoin classes um and that's it well, i noticed i remember when we went out there for the the me premiere bitcoin kind of graduation ceremony they have one of the things they have people do is is basically uh reset their recall their wallet using their their keywords and as we were watching these people do it you realize it's so challenging for them because yeah. a lot of them were illiterate so yeah. they're trying to like put in these things that they don't even know what it represents mm -hmm. and so that was eye opening for me of like okay we need better ways to do this because for people who are illiterate it's it's going to be very challenging for them to even know how to like even if they have the keyword written down for them to match that with their keyboard was tough yeah that that was um living there was a big realization that um what we take for granted is not for most people like it's very very complex stuff um and yeah honestly i i i i do not recommend them to use uh, non custodial wallets because if they lose the the backup that's that's it they're done and they are not that accustomed to using uh, smartphones like they use smartphones but it it does not represent that much in terms of social life or um you know it's 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 a device that they use to communicate but that's it uh, more or less I use whatsapp yeah yeah and so but usually voice messages a lot of times yeah yeah that's most of yeah, the time because yeah. a lot of them are illiterate and so exactly. that's exactly yeah, way they communicate and so um, they live on an island most of them are fishermen or they they work uh near or on the sea and so like every other day we hear uh i lost my phone and that's it like i i i have another one but i have to um take back everything and like they lose like if it's not stored in the cloud or in a remote uh, computer they lose it so yeah. for non-custodial wallets it's very tough like i focus a lot of my um explanations of my teachings uh, explaining them explaining to them that there are, there are uh, bitcoin banks and bitcoin uh, self custodial digital uh, vaults um and that it's very different but um very few people actually uh, are able to to uh back to to take complete uh sovereignty and responsibility over their money so they use bitcoin but uh they don't have the the full capacity of of using it and having the the sovereignty of, that bitcoin offers so that's a trade-off yeah. but it's i think for them it's still uh, a big win uh not having to to rely on on a currency that is printed outside their country like in the us um so and most of them have no financial services available to them they're, exactly. they're outside of the financial system and it's and that's one thing that you know obviously as, as bitcoiners we we preach self-custody but you also have to be realistic for people's situations and and even to understand within the custodial wallets a lot of the custodial wallets are set up with email being somehow the way that they're they can recall their account well, a lot of the people don't use email. They I mean, don't even have an email. Yeah. And so for them to try to use email, and they're surely not going to know how to keep it secure. And so even as they're doing custodial wallets, understanding that them having their email tied as their backup or their login is going to create serious problems. Yeah. But then even with the, the phones, that's also a challenge because a lot of times they're changing phone numbers all the yeah. time. And so... So there, there are definitely a lot of very practical issues that we have to to deal with and figure out ways to overcome. Yeah. Definitely, it's yeah. A, it's a big challenge. It has been challenging um, ever since we arrived, especially the weather. Let's say that was my first kind of like uh, that. What that was what hit me first, right? Like this tropical weather and everything. But you see, there are so many more problems, not problems, but just challenges. Let's say. Because we are we are in this project of 
making this island bitcoin island and circular economy and everything in bitcoin but honestly for us to do that there's so many things we have to change first literally just any um, basic service like electricity how are we supposed to make this a circular economy in bitcoin if there's like no signal for the phones there's no electricity when the storms when the storms uh arrive to the to the island so all of these things were not um let's say we're not in our site when we started or at least not in my site no. when mm -hmm. we started the yeah. project like we were so excited for it and i'm still am but i see you know the oh, whole I, thing. I saw all those things and i was thinking well hopefully they're they're young enough and and excited <laughs> enough that they won't realize that mm -hmm. this thing they're getting into is going to be uh, a lot harder than they think it uh -huh. is. So. Yeah, it, and it, living on that eye. And I remember thinking, I'm like, I would have thought that was really cool when I was in my 20s. Right. Like, now there's no way I would go <laughs> live out there. So. You should come visit us more often. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come visit for the day. But, that's cool. But, well, but I think as, and, and that's how it was when, when we started coming here in El Zante. It wasn't quite as rustic as the island, but it was, it was very similar. There was there was not any like nice places to stay. There was the power would go out sometimes for days at a time. And so I definitely understand the, the challenges <laughs> that come up. But you guys are young and uh, really yeah, young. you got so, this. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, we, we have when you when you get old like me, you won't want to do it. So <laughs> live it up while you're young. I think we're going to remember this experience. Um, when, we're going to remember it, loving it, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think so. It, it's net positive like for for me uh, at least it's it's a net positive and um yeah whenever i'm i'm kind of tired or feeling not depressed but down, down because yeah. it's 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 hard sometimes it's hard like we, slow we, it goes yeah. a lot slower than you would like it to. yeah like there's there are no schedules <laughs> yeah like if you say let's meet at four um yeah you can you, wait, you can okay. wait. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah whenever i feel down i'm like okay just think um uh, about about yourself like in 20 years looking back at what you're doing and i'm like okay that's cool and honestly like i want to kind of retake what quentin was saying uh earlier about the community you know the first month uh the first three weeks that we were there we were literally not talking to or i wasn't talking to anybody just because we were so busy with mm. a communal house we were i kid you not we were like painting 12 hours a day like we started at seven or amazing eight amazing how long that stuff takes <laughs> right like we never expected it but mm -hmm. um anyway so we were not really in contact with the community and i really remember how I would because the communal house is kind of maybe like a 15 minute walk from where we actually stay. And so you have to just walk the one street <laughs> that we have. And I remember just people I was walking by to work. Right. And I remember just people just staring at me at, as like this alien or like, like, what are they They're doing? They're just curious. Like they, they, they want to know what's happening, but at the but same they time, wouldn't they, they talk don't want to, us. to, to, uh -huh. they wouldn't to take really, part of it. Uh -huh. They wouldn't really approach us as like, Hey, what's up? Like, what are you? No, it was just staring. And it was, of course it was, you know, normal as let's say that way. But then now, uh, you know, it's been three months and I can confidently say that I have friends here. And it's insane how this small community just feels like a little home now. Like mm -hmm. we were in Punta Mango for five or I was in Punta Mango for four days and then a day in Berlin. And I came back to La Piraya and I was just so happy to be You're home. Coming home. Literally, yeah. I thought this like nice homey feeling in my in my soul. Like I was so happy and and then it, no, and the then four days went out four days and we just yeah it just came back yesterday so mm -hmm. four days of no but that's what i'm saying like all these challenges all these things but then they're made doable because of the exactly. community that supports us and and that actually wants to in in their way help mm -hmm. us uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah they they want to help but they won't do the work like they they want to to show support mm -hmm. but um like few will will say like it's, i can help it takes you. a while to get buy in and to get mm -hmm. people yeah. to participate but uh, yeah it's been crazy how much it has um i don't really know how to say it like just 
how much it has grown into them and into us that we are part of the island now. And yeah, we, we left for like four days. <laughs> and when we came back, they were all like, I thought you you had left. Like, uh, like where, where why were didn't you? you say and, anything? Uh -huh. and, and I don't know, it just felt so nice mm -hmm. to, to be missed, you know, in this weird place where we are now. Like, it's just amazing. And, and the feeling of community has really saved at least me, you know, I, I was pretty, you know, I don't know, I don't know, maybe double thinking my decision a few months ago. I was like, this is tough and it's not going to be, it's not going to get any easier. And I was completely wrong because now it's easier because of the community, because how much mm -hmm. they appreciate what we're doing, or at least how much they show appreciation. Yeah. Um, Uh, yeah, it's it's been amazing. Now I, I I was telling Quentin the other day. I was like, hey, like when we when we leave, because I know that's a thing where we're actually gonna leave. I told him I'm gonna miss it here. Like it's gonna be tough to leave. It's not it's not just a I don't know if, uh, easy decision for us to make at least. So what has been the uh, well? We we got to address this picture here. Mm -hmm. other, other than your guns, there. That's <laughs> That's the the trash and, and that's loaded with trash, right? That was one of the initiatives that you guys have yeah. done, both to to help clean up the island, but also to inject Bitcoin yes. into the community and have it circulating. Was was paying the kids to to collect trash. It was Quentin's idea, which, and it which was I love that. And so that's go ahead. Yeah, so we have two two different um, teams. Let's say we have a, a cleaning team that is led by uh, Patricia. Uh, who does an incredible job of of uh, managing her team because it's it's like it's because it's not formal work um it it can get very hard to motivate people because sometimes they want to work but they want to work more than two hours or they want to work but they won't accept being paid in in bitcoin so sometimes it's very very difficult to 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 have workforce, to have people willing willing to do the work, to actually work. Uh, that's why we had to paint the, the communal house ourselves because <laughs> um, nobody was willing to do it or to do it well, because that's important, also. <laughs> <laughs> especially with, with paint. Um, and so, yeah, Patricia leads the cleaning team, uh, which um, varies between six and 12 people. Um, adults adults uh -huh. yeah they work um three to four and sometimes five days a week they clean the streets they clean the beach which is very hard because the beach is filled with um everything like there's everything on the beach like the it's all filled with uh sand and with uh fungi and it's it's Horrible. And um, we have the, the the team with kids that is uh, right there. Um, that was a big success. So that's the trash collection Sunday. And we, uh, we gave them to each uh, one. We gave um, a bolt card that was uh, given to us by uh, Tianqi. Um, and uh, we give them trash bags and for every trash bag that they return full we give them uh, the equivalent of one dollar uh, to their bolt cards that they uh, in turn go to spend uh, in the shops that have the pos that accept the payments with the bolt cards so we inject bitcoin we clean the island and at the same time uh, we promote the circular economy with the POS um, in the shops of La Pierraya. So that's that's awesome. Which which is, I think, the first place in the world where that's so. really being used like that. It was originally we were going to do it in El Zante. We were working with uh, with Fernando and he that was the plan. And I told him, you know what, I think I want to roll it out first on this island. I think it'll just be kind of more meaningful. Um, And so, well, you know, so, yeah, it's been it was a whole thing for us to hand out the POS and the businesses and everything. And it was it was pretty challenging, not going to lie. But then when we started doing the trash collection Sundays with the kids because they were so excited to go. Yes, they were so excited to go and spend their 
uh, money, they, they say like their money in, in any, any store because they just saw a store and they just wanted to spend it. And they just tap it. Uh -huh, just tap it, but not all of the businesses have the POS machines because at first it was this weird thing that why would I need that? Um, I don't kind of want to put in the work. We created scarcity. Exactly. Like, like, like shops started coming to us and say, where's the machine? Where's I want mine? one, I want one. Uh -huh. <laughs> and and, and like, yeah, it, it works. Uh, it, it's, it, it's beautiful. It's you need beautiful. that FOMO to kick in. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it, and the kids also, like uh, at first we had only 30 cards maybe, or may, maybe less than that. And, and um, kids were coming to us like, where's my card? Like everybody has a card and I, and I don't have one. So we, they don't even know what they were for, but they just <laughs> wanted one, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and so we contacted Chunky again. And they they uh, accepted to to send new cards, so yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's... now they are they are so happy because they literally work for their money, so they really appreciate the the things they they buy. For example, yeah. so I remember. Well, we can talk about that maybe later on with the with the festival, but with with the kids, uh, the the prior weeks they were just working so hard and they really wanted to earn money because they were saving it to mm -hmm. spend it at the festival yeah. so you can see this whole mindset of the kids just being like i'm gonna save it because i want to be able to participate in this huge thing that's gonna happen right so it was amazing like everything just worked out perfectly better yeah. than we expected honestly they were actually stacking sets yeah like exactly. they, they were working to receive bitcoin and they were like can you can you tell me how much I have? And and I was like, okay, you have uh, three dollars. Can you check again? <laughs> Ten minutes later, how much do I have? Like, did, did it go up? <laughs> yeah, and they were very excited. Mm -hmm. And and it's a lot of kids, so it's it's draining. It's a lot of work. <laughs> like Sundays uh, are like the 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 busiest day of, of the course. week. We and, end and up we have wrecked. busy weeks, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, Sundays are are great. But you can see the kids are so grateful, and as as I was talking about community and how how nice they are today, kids are they just make a huge part of that for me. Like yeah. with the English classes, of course, with the trash collection Sundays, like you can see how much they want us there maybe only because it's a new thing that they didn't have before but that just works you know it just works for us to keep us doing the things that we have to do and you know because because kids they really put pressure on it like they're yeah. like so sunday right sunday <laughs> and we're like uh yeah sunday <laughs> well i love what you were saying about the shops because we saw the same here when we started bitcoin beach we we had a couple shops on board initially be more because we knew them and they wanted to do us a favor, but then they started getting all this business. And then the other shops were like, hey, what's what's, what's going, going on over on? there? What am I? And so they're like, well, I want to do this. And so that's really you, you kind of need to have people come to it themselves rather than push it on people. So exactly. I love that that model that you guys have, have rolled out there. And and I think, the, you know, initially I was kind of a skeptic when when Fernando from uh, prior Bitcoin came to me and had this idea with the tap cards. I was like, I don't know. Like, we're just replicating the the system we have now. Like, why do we need that? But then just seeing like, well, these kids don't have phones. Exactly. And this makes it so much easier. Logistically, they don't have to worry about having the internet on their phone, just the person receiving it. And the reality is for a lot of people in their mind, it, it brings status to have a card that you can like pay for stuff. Definitely. So, so yeah, I'm super excited and excited that you guys are like the groundbreakers that have really like <laughs> yeah, rolled this way, out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it, that's pretty pretty amazing. So what what's one thing other than the the you know the internet and the electric and those challenges? What's what's another challenge that came up that you guys were like never would have thought of the people their objection to using Bitcoin? Do you have something in mind or um, so? People work as fishermen and they harvest shells. And for that, they get they have their own circular economy in some way with uh, cash. And it's 
very hard to to tap into that circular economy and bring Bitcoin to it because like they're trading their shellfish with each other. For, okay. Like like they 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 use uh, dollars to do so and because it's it's tiny transactions they only exchange a few dollars and it's very hard to tap into that part of the circular economy. Uh, we we actually did a good job at uh, orange peeling businesses. Like you can go to maybe sometimes it goes up, sometimes it, sometimes it goes down. Like sometimes people just say no, I don't accept it anymore, and you have to <laughs> redo the work. But um, but uh, I think you can go to maybe sixty percent of shops, and yeah. they accept Bitcoin. So that's kind of a good result, even though there are maybe 20 shops in total. So it's yeah. what it is. But, um, but yeah, um, uh, we focused uh, our work of uh, the circular economy on the shops, but also we, we tried to add one hop after that, because we not only want the shops to accept Bitcoin and then to go change it for dollars which requires the same route as going to the ATM, which is going to the Chivo ATM in Usulutan, which is the, the, the town. Uh, you have to take the, the taxi boat and then uh, a bus to go uh, withdraw money. So we tried to uh, find the, the providers that, uh, that they go to to buy stuff. And we tried to uh, make them accept Bitcoin as well. So that uh, was key. That was key uh -huh. for the in the in the port. Um, there are three three shops that accept Bitcoin, and there are maybe four or five shops in total. So they can go to these providers and and use. And when Bitcoin. you say these, these are the shops that all the the local stores go to buy their supplies. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Uh, but for the the people that work. Um, like a few hours and get a few bucks and, and that go fish and come back with a, uh, a few fishes and get paid that way, that's very hard because we have to find people that buy them, but it's, it's, it's much harder Yeah, because they already have something in place. So it's, it's hard. Well, and it takes really years for people to understand, to fully understand Bitcoin and the value that it, it brings and people are we're all creatures of habit so if you have something that works you're reluctant to change so i'm really quite like astonished at, at what a large impact you guys have had in that short of time because i know for you it feels slow but knowing <laughs> how these things yeah. go i'm That's super true. proud of you guys because Thanks. it's like Thank you. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's not easy and it's, that's yeah yes yeah, no no i had go ahead um so that's actually why knowing that I was, we were gonna spend uh, six months on the island. Um, since the beginning, I, I was talking with uh, my teammates, and I I, I told them, um, okay, we need to make, we need to organize some kind of event that will uh, bring people uh, to both realize uh, people from outside the island realize that. The island is beautiful that they need to come and to share this this place um, and for people of the island to realize that they can bring tourism on the island with Bitcoin if they put in the effort. Um, so that's what we've, we've been working on. At first, it was going to be a, um, a beach soccer tournament and then we turned it into a a full-fledged uh, festival and yeah. that's the that's the even poster right there you know and i want to add something here because i i noticed i think we both did that people in the island they've lived in this way for how many years and when we introduce them to this idea of tourism and people coming here and all over the world and blah blah, blah like they don't see it as a reality whatsoever. Like there, there are some restaurants, there, there are maybe one or two places where you can actually stay the night in La Piraya, but 
you know, the economy is not based on tourism whatsoever. So when you introduce them to this idea of tourists, uh, you know, like, like, like people actually coming to the, to La, to Isla La Piraya just to, just to see it, just to, to, to literally enjoy it. People don't see it as a reality. They're like, but no <laughs> so because they, they know what reality is there yeah exactly mm -hmm. so we we saw this lack of i don't know if i want to say lack of you know excitement but it was definitely something so alienated from from their view at least they see it as it is now not what it could exactly. be i mean exactly beautiful amazing location so many I mean, if with the right infrastructure and accommodations, it would be a dream place for people. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so Quentin had this amazing idea of doing this event, not only for the tourism, but for not, not only for the tourists, but for the for the locals to actually see the potential they have. So we wanted to bring everybody right in the in El Salvador or or wherever they were just to see La Piraya for the locals to realize, oh my God, this could actually work as a touristic destination. And well, we can, we can dive into that now. <laughs> yeah, so we turned the, the organize, so we actually did not turn the organization towards organizing the festival because from the start, what I did is I, I organized this in a way that everything that we're doing on the island goes towards this objective of the festival so that that gives it like everything that is about uh, cleaning um, um english classes english classes fixing the, the 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 football field which is the 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 most central place in the island that that was in a in a bad bad shape uh, there was like uh, glass in in the in the sand and stuff so we had to 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 fix everything but we made it in a way that this was this was incentivized by the festival that that gave meaning to everything that we did and that allowed us to create mo momentum actually because that's exactly what i was mentioning before they they have lived this way for example so when when quentin um you know introduced this whole cleaning the island people's you know they they don't they don't want to only because that's the way it is. Why would we clean it if that's how we've lived, you know, for 30 years? I don't see the, the reason. So we needed the purpose. We need to clean it for the festival. We need to clean it for this date. And so this was crucial in the whole organization uh with with everything with the with a uh soccer field, with the classes, with everything was just, you know, targeted to this date. Otherwise, it was just very like, oh yeah, sure, we can do it. But we're teaching Bitcoin, but people were like, okay, teach uh -huh. me Bitcoin, uh, but uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I'll so, never use it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So everything that we did, we did it with the 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 communicated purpose of saying uh, that's for the festival. We we capacitated the all all the businesses that were at the festival had the POS machine, knew how to use it, accepted uh, payments in Bitcoin. And, and this fact was made possible because when capacita capacitating them, we were saying people are going to come and people are going to buy stuff that they wouldn't be buying from you if you uh, didn't accept Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So you have, to, you have to know how to use it. And they were very motivated by it. And same thing with the the football field um we we bought the the material to build this this net for example behind the 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 field and but i said to the team uh you have to you have to put it yourself like i had to help but uh, <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> three people came but <laughs> at least three people came and and we 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 put it ourselves and yeah so um, the festival was a great idea in the sense that it gave a uh, purpose to to our work because we knew we were, we were being there um, uh, six months and in six months you could do many things or you could do nothing no i i when i heard i remember it was from you or from john 
the idea of the festival, I thought, oh my gosh, they have no idea what they're getting into. This is <laughs> going to be so much more work than they think. And it's going to be so much harder to get people to come because it's it's a little bit of a challenging place. And so I, you know, I, as you get older, you become more cynical and you think things <laughs> won't work. And so that's why it's good. You guys are young. <laughs> um, and I was thinking to myself, like, all right, we need to make sure we throw everything behind this because I knew it was important. It was vital. And I loved the idea. And I love that you guys were willing to, to take that on. But it is it is no small feat. And you have all yeah. the pressure of like, okay, what if we do all this and get the community hyped up and then people don't come? And they, yeah. That's what's stressful. So yeah. it's like, <laughs> so I love the fact that I was, I was so sad. I was in California during the festival, so I wasn't able to attend. You missed it, Mike. I know, I did. <laughs> and, uh, but I was so excited to hear that, you know, that Bitcoiners came out, the locals from the island came out, that... So when you guys had all kinds of crazy stuff, I mean, you had jet ski activities yeah. and um, what what all did the you guys do during well, the Well, we had a full day, like literally it was a full day of activities. So like starting up at maybe nine, I think we started kind of nine. Uh, we already had uh, food stands, uh, craft stands, just selling everything on Bitcoin, of course, um, local dishes and, and artisanal little, you know, Artesanias, Perhaps. literally. Yeah. Uh huh. And then at 11 in the morning, we kind of started the day with a female soccer, so, uh, beach soccer game. And this was so much fun only because La Piraya's team formed maybe two we weeks built, before. Like we built, we built the team. <laughs> they didn't have a women's team before they no. didn't. We had, we had to buy them uh, equipment. We had to buy them uniforms, uniforms, and 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 I mean, we built it. They they built themselves. But yeah. Of course, we had to give them the, the the tools and the incentive to to build a team. Because literally, like a month before, we said or Quentin said, "Okay, there's gonna be a a festival, and we want you to play." And they were like, "Okay, but there's no team." And he said, "We'll build one." And so <laughs> yeah, they started. It was crazy. I I can say I can proudly say that I trained with them for some trainings. Uh, but they were doing it like the right way. They were training every single day. Um, they knew who were who were they gonna play against, and it was a pretty, uh, you know, a pretty good team. They, that it, plays in the national league. Aha, uh -huh, mm -hmm. they play in the national league. It's it's you know well formed and everything. And so the girls were nervous, but they were not only nervous; they were actually actively doing something for for the team to to build up, you know. And so. I yeah, it was amazing. They won at the at the <laughs> game. Oh my god, it was crazy. So much fun. And and beach football or soccer, whatever you want to call it, it's it's a very different game <laughs> because it it's it's hard to move in the sand. And so there's a lot of the balls in the air a lot of yeah. times, a lot of bicycle kicks, a lot of you know, not the normal running up and down. The first time I saw it, I was like, wow, this is very different than yeah, like, yeah. it's so exciting. It's, it's, yeah, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, at uh, at ten, we we opened uh, we so we rented jet skis for the day, and from ten to four or even five in the afternoon, we had like two or three jet skis open for a ride for anyone. Uh, so that was that was great. Like I I didn't have much time to to even see uh, people enjoying the ride. But from what I've been told, it was a complete Well, it's so success. beautiful there. You got the volcanoes in the background, the beautiful bay, the island. Yeah. yeah. It was crazy. I did. I enjoyed a jet ski ride. <laughs> and it was great. It was great. And of course, it was free for everybody. So it was funny because at first, people thought you had to pay. So nobody was really there. And so the... The announcer kept saying on the microphone, like, hey, you got free jet ski rides, blah, blah, blah. And so when people started realizing they were free, there were there was a line for the jet skis just all the way. Oh, I would have been I would have been in that line. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um at 12, we did a few activities uh in inside the 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 beach soccer field. Um it was led by Emilio from Mi Primer Bitcoin. Um, it was about uh, scoring goals against the, the goalie of uh, La Piraya. Mm -hmm. 
And so if if you scored a goal, you received sats, and if you if the goalie stopped the the ball, um, he received sats. So that was that was kind of fun. And at and at one we started the the actual uh, beat, uh, the um, beach soccer tournament uh, between La Piraya, Rancho Viejo, uh, San Sebastian, and El Espino, uh, which was like they are um, four neighbor teams that it's kind of a i don't know in in french we say derby like it's it's kind of the 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 games that don't, you don't want to miss you know you yeah. know there there's going to be a lot of pressure they're and very it's, competitive exactly and, and they're like most of those are all separate islands right so exactly. it's like these islands getting together to, exactly. to battle each other so yeah I love and that. so la piraya won uh, which and was, I love that trophy there. That yeah, yeah it's great. Right. Uh, big shout out to uh, Alejandro that uh, that uh, made them that, that uh, Got bought them. them yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, so La Piraya won twice, and that that was that was great. That was amazing. The whole the whole day was full of with like emotions because it was very very exciting to see all these people just come together for a match right because they love soccer uh beach soccer they love it and you you because they are very competitive against each other and so when when like one and one were you know going <clears throat> for the first match and then the second and then the final people were screaming people were it was it was a full day it yeah. was very nice and so we we had to we had to uh recruit like to to employ uh, national uh, referees because some teams were like they're gonna they're gonna play this and that and they're gonna try to <laughs> you had to bring in neutral referees so. exactly. well, you know, we, because... we had to 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 get the 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 official ones from the national league and <laughs> yeah yeah the... they they know what to ask for they were like no 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 if I'm going to play against this island I need some <laughs> neutral <laughs> referees exactly yeah. So um yeah basically like the from 1 to 5 it was filled with with just soccer games uh that was the most of the day but then throughout we had some activities for the children uh or yeah we can see it there it was very nice they were they were having fun yeah. they could pay for everything and Bitcoin and the kids could spend more sats exactly and, exactly and the local businesses could earn sats no i love I love that. Uh, That's the Mi Primer Bitcoin yeah. team. Yeah, they were selling some shirts, some yeah. bolt cards. Um, also, we had so people if they didn't if they've never used Bitcoin before, they could definitely go to the festival because we were exchanging uh, money or u dollars for Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. So that was on the Mi Primer Bitcoin stand. Yeah, we had a we had a K one ATM that we can uh -huh. see on the picture. And and with it, uh, we we could teach people how to actually purchase Bitcoin that they could later use at the at the food and craft stands. So that was super uh, helpful. Um, and and we we also had uh, some Bitcoin that we could exchange for um, uh, cash. So and and many people actually did only only to you know just to to try and then go spend it. So yeah. that was super super helpful. Yeah, that is, that is amazing. Well, I really admire the work you guys have done out there. And I know it's not easy and I know <laughs> it's not glamorous. Um, and I'm sure you've uh, many times been second guessing your life choices that <laughs> brought you out there. Um, but no, it's 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 like literally going to leave a legacy and, and change lives long term. And so very, very proud of you guys. And, Thank you. And yeah. And so. I'm curious as to what advice you would give to other people. There's a lot of other communities around the world that, you know, people that want to start Bitcoin circular economies or want to be involved in different ways in their respective countries. So talk to that first. And then after that, if there's people that are in El Salvador that want to be involved with your guys' effort, what are some things that they can do and what are some opportunities? Mm -hmm. You want to start? So <clears throat> I think it's, 
entirely depends on on the situation of each um bitcoin community where they are um how much resources they have uh, what are their um objectives um maybe start small <laughs> and, and do with what you have um, give a purpose i would say yeah yeah in our case uh, i'm i'm super grateful for uh the help that we have from uh, Bitcoin Beach, because that allows us to 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 actually do stuff. Like I know many people around the world would would love to have um, um, some some budget to just start working and because it takes resources. It takes yeah, you gotta, it does. You got to prime does. the pump. You've got to pump sats into exactly. the community to get. And at the same people's. time, at the same time, you don't you don't want to only just pump sats because you're gonna dilapidate the money. Yeah. you have to you have to streamline what you're doing. But, and you can't just get because if exactly. you just give something, to people, people for will, free, take, will take. They, will they take. They don't value it. So you have to find a way to inject it into the community, but in a way that makes people have to work for it. Exactly. In our case, this festival, this event was um, a great way to to do it. Um, it, it gave us traction and, and, and made people want to, to actually do the work. Um, so that's, I think, uh, if you have like a, a Bitcoin community or a project, if you can implement some kind of, of, uh, rewarding mechanism that is, um, not long-term, but maybe short to medium term that, that can allow, um, uh, people to to stay motivated and to have a, a purpose because that's the most important thing we as bitcoiners and as, as bitcoin nerds uh we we have the 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 bigger picture but most people don't and and in some places they don't even have a picture at all like uh in la piraya it's complicated like uh when you tell people like see you tomorrow they they sometimes say stuff like uh if i don't get sick or you know like like future is is um mysterious oh, no. question yeah mm -hmm. exactly yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly so yeah things i like, think yeah so, yeah, sorry things like saving for example we try we always try to say like hey so when somebody pays you on bitcoin sure like you that's your money like go spend it or whatever but try to save just save a tiny a little amount of what you know uh you've earned and most of the time how are they supposed to save if they don't even know what to eat right like these things that us in uh living in with all the comforts and commodities and everything we just know as granted other communities don't have it and so I think what Quentin was saying about like just knowing all your circumstances and your and your situation, you really have to think in their man mindset as we were uh, discussing before. Otherwise, it's just going to be your own projection of what you want to be exactly. into someone or into some like a community, and it's not going to work because that they are not you, right? So basically, just put put yourself out there to their um reality and from there start otherwise it's it's gonna be tough so do you think that you guys could have done this by just going and visiting the island once a week or once every two weeks no i don't not. think so i don't think so um so I, I can honestly say that we've been working seven days a week for three months mm -hmm. So you you in our case we had to be there like um in Well I think in general that's that's the point I'm getting yeah. at it's <laughs> it's almost impossible yeah. to do that without you can't just like plop in and bitcoinize people you exactly. have to be ingrained in the community That's exactly uh what I was about to say is that you have to live their way otherwise they will especially in this island which is uh remote and isolated otherwise you're going to be seen as a as a foreigner like mm -hmm. as an outsider so exactly like we had to do what they do we had to live through what they live we had to uh complain about the the power outages for two days uh we had to we had to live that with them so that they realized that 
they're actually living the way we're living. So we, we have to give them at least some kind of credit and maybe we can listen to what they're saying. They, they have skin in the game, you know, yeah. you know, it's, it's very important. And yeah, I, I don't know where I was going with that, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's super important to, 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 to be there with, with them. Yeah. So are there specific opportunities for, you know, obviously we want to encourage Bitcoiners when they are in the country to, to make it out to yeah. La Paria or Bitcoin Island um, and spend some sats out there, right. support the businesses. Um, I know with uh, Adopting Bitcoin coming up in November, hopefully we'll get a group to, to go out there. But if, if people are visiting or here for short or long term, is there any ways that, that they can be of help to you guys? um yeah come visit like uh exactly. it, 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 it's always great to to tour the island with the tourists it, it's it's a beautiful place uh if you only stay for the day you're gonna see the the beautiful side we're, we're <laughs> gonna we're gonna show you around to so that you have some kind of a of a reality quick, awakeness <laughs> yeah a quick view of uh, what things are uh, behind the curtains yeah uh, but we you won't have to stay uh, uh um, for the night uh, and, and and if you do uh, it's gonna be okay <laughs> it's gonna be great it's gonna be fun for you yeah. if you don't live there it's just gonna be an anecdote which is you're gonna where you're gonna really appreciate yeah it, but more generally um people can like i encourage people to roam the country like it's a small country you can go everywhere like you don't have to stay at at one place uh, rent a car or take the buses if you're feeling adventurous and uh and just just roam the country it's it's full of beautiful and different places so you have to take the opportunity like some some countries are are huge uh, this one is small it's it's compact it's it's concentrated so you have to you have to take opportunity yeah. for that. And we say that La Piraya Island is so isolated and remote and it is but it's not so complicated to get there. Yeah. So if if you know people are thinking about coming for adopting bitcoin or you know or any any just bitcoin source of topic here uh yeah just come visit and it just come to show the locals of la piraya that they can actually build something from tourism because we know they can and it's uh it's a it's the best way you could come help honestly and yeah it's not so it's not so hard some boats now, after a festival, they also accept Bitcoin as payments, oh, awesome. the, yeah. the taxi boats. And so, it's probably encouraging to you guys to have yeah, people come out. It is. Exactly. And visit. Just go to Puerto Parada so, and ask yeah. for a taxi boat. Well, I think you, you guys met my sister and my brother-in-law. Yes, yeah, we did. We did. We out there. And they I think bought, that was my sister's first Bitcoin transaction. Yeah, Perfect. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. They bought a hammock, yeah. a locally made hammock yeah. in Bitcoin. They bought it there. Yeah, yeah. That and it was beautiful. amazing. Yeah. He he was like the 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 guy that makes the the hammocks. Uh, he was super glad. Like he had not used uh, Bitcoin before uh -huh. because he's not very tech savvy. And and I said, okay, like let's not push people to to yeah. Bitcoin. And this day, he was um, actually encouraged to accept to learn a little bit about Bitcoin because uh, your sister said okay i'm gonna buy the hammock and i said okay but do you want to pay in, in in cash or in bitcoin in bitcoin okay so i told him you have to accept bitcoin if you want to 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 close the sale and he said okay let's go <laughs> let's do it yeah yeah and it was such a impact let's say because after that he actually you know reached out to quentin to say hey i want you to help me uh help yeah. me show my work help me because he yeah he doesn't really sell much outside of whatever he sells honestly yeah. so yeah and it was just this huge thing that your sister did <laughs> oh, fun yeah so where can people follow you you mentioned earlier that you try to stay off twitter uh but i know <laughs> Quint i know quentin's on there so <laughs> yeah. um let people know your guys twitter handle uh your website and then and then give a plug for your yeah, company okay. that, that you're starting too. Um, your Twitter handle? It's just Sam Suarez08, I think. Okay. I don't even know how I'm not <laughs> big, but yeah, I think so. <laughs> so I'm the BTC backup. And yeah, um, I'm providing uh, private coaching to people that want to be sovereign with their uh, money, thanks to Bitcoin. 
but they that do not feel technical enough to do it by themselves. So I, I'm I'm um, I have this streamlining streamlined process that will help them uh, purchase Bitcoin, receive it, secure it, and create an inheritance uh, will. So it's a, a a whole strategy for people that want to really get serious about Bitcoin for their future and the future of their family. Awesome! No, that's so needed because I think so. <laughs> you hear these stories, even of people who bought Bitcoin, but then they have no plan, and you know, yeah, something I, unfortunate happens, and they pass away, and nobody knows how to to access it. So, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, that's awesome. Is there anything we didn't cover that you guys want mm -hmm. listeners to know? I guess future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah like what does the future hold? Well, for now, um, yeah, we're we're staying in La Piraya. It's it's gonna be over, or at least budget wise, is is getting close to be over by October, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, and then after that, we'll see. Because for now, there's no, you know, set plan. There's nothing official. Um, but we, at least, I want to keep on in this whole world of of the orange world that i live now and it's amazing <laughs> and yeah um that's that's for me i guess yeah um we have we have um we have new projects for la piraya uh for uh what's left of uh of what we can do um and i think uh we can do we we still have things to to do uh there it's not over like uh, it's not over it's uh, it's we have things to to do and uh then i will i will probably uh, i'll do my best to continue to contribute to uh, bitcoin education and bitcoin adoption uh probably with uh, me premier bitcoin yeah it's we don't really know what the future holds but um that's the best way to do it we're open for opportunity exactly awesome awesome well thank you guys so much i'm i'm glad uh you I get to spend a couple of days with you uh, in El Zante. Yeah. Here and thank uh, you, thank you so much for having us and to, you know, just listen to the story and everything. It's it's been it's been great being here. No, I'm so excited that people in the Bitcoin space will, you know, because sometimes people see pictures on Twitter and little things, but for them to hear the whole story and and understand like how comprehensive this is and the effort out there. So, thank you guys. Thank and, you, Mike. Uh, yeah, keep up the good work. Yeah. Thank you. Let's do Will it. Do. Thank you, Mike.